just feel like you got your shit together. I think that's a really important undervalued feeling. Like, how do I actually feel like I'm adulting uh, as I head into my 40s or you're in your 40s? Like, how do I actually feel like I can manage my time better? And why has no one really taught us this? Welcome, everyone. It's so awesome to have you here and back with me today. How are you? How has your day been? I hope everything's going great in your world. It's about to get better. I have five incredible tips for you on the systems that I believe you need to have in place to help you achieve success and fulfillment on a daily level. I'm going to be doing another episode later on that's more about like the macro and thinking from a bird's eye view about what needs to happen in your life for more success on a larger scale. But today's about the daily scale. What are my top tips for you guys? And by the way, this has been really important for me to get into my life. What are the systems and like actually use these systems? Because before having these systems that I'm about to give you, I was kind of doing trial and error and I was kind of like throwing spaghetti at the wall with my daily tasks, just seeing what would stick, not really having a plan for how to go about my day and just whimming it, going on a whim. And honestly, that can work for a little bit of things and it can work for a little bit of time, but it's not good for overall sustained success. And I really want to give you the tools that are going to help you feel like, all right, this is this feels solid. I feel like I know what I'm doing. I trust myself and I can rely on this plan to really kick some ass today and throughout this week and move the needle on what's important for me. And not even just move the needle, but like just feel like you got your shit together. I think that's a really important undervalued feeling. Like how do I actually feel like I'm adulting? Uh, as I head into my 40s or you're in your 40s, like, how do I actually feel like I can manage my time better? And why has no one really taught us this? I don't know. I just I just feel like that should be something that's really brought into the education system when you're younger. Like, what is the creative way that works for you that will bring you the most joy and success and fulfillment with every single hour you have in your life? Like, let's squeeze out the best from it, right? Okay, so let's get into it. Enough with the rants. I've got five tips for you that are my five, really the systems I need you to have in place that I think is going to get you the ultimate success in your life. So here are my top five tips. Okay. Number one is time management. I have this little saying, if you don't manage your time, someone else will for you. And what I mean by that is if you want other people to run your life, and then you want to sit back and be resentful and blame them for all of the reasons you get nothing done, then don't manage your time. But however, if you want to take ownership back, take responsibility for what you're achieving and what you're not, and learn a new skill and stop being so bitter about what everyone else wants from you and and actually become the captain of your own ship, then you need to learn time management. This is how you actually feel like you're in control of your life again. And this is how you actually get shit done is to learn how to manage your time. So first and foremost, I want you to find a system that works for you. I have gone through every single like physical planner I don't have them. They're somewhere in the around my bookshelf. But I I used to be into um, anecdote planners, not sponsored by them, but their pens. Their their pens are really beautiful too. And they write really nice, or they help me write nice. I have terrible penmanship. Anyone else? I didn't grow up fully with computers. I'm a little older, um, but so I you think like I had to learn cursive in school. That's how old I am, and. Um, But I still have shitty penmanship. It's just gone down so much because, and I still write a lot. Like, why does my penmanship, I think it's because I rush. Anyway, I have gone through physical planners because I enjoy writing, even though my penmanship is terrible. I also found that it was just sort of taking up physical space in my tiny office and I don't like clutter. 
so that was one thing as to the reason I got away from physical writing planners, like journal planners. And then I went to digital and digital really works well for me now. So the moral of that story is you've got to do what works for you. Give yourself permission to experiment. Try all of the planners out there. Get lost in Target in the planner store. Get lost. Like how many people love the stationary aisles like me and or the calendar aisles? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Like I just, I'm a stationary girl. I'm a paper girl. I'm a pens girl. The supplies back to school season, like supply shopping. (gasps) All the stuff with like the rainbows and the dolphins. Do you remember all that stuff? There's a name for that. I love that shit. And so having paper calendars and paper planners like fulfilled that love I have. But it honestly, like I said, it just took up too much room and I just feel like Um, It slowed me down a little bit. Why should you have a time management system? This will give you the structure that your creativity needs to actually flourish. Most of us creatives have so many ideas that it overwhelms us because we're just flowing in every single stinking direction. When you have a time management system, it like puts up the bumper bowl, like the bumper bowling in the gutters of your bowling lane so that you can bounce off of the structure that you set up for yourself and actually hit the target. This has been the number one gift in my life because I am a creative, I'm an artist, I'm an air sign, and I'm a manifesting generator, which means that my brain is nuts. And I have a lot of creative ideas um, that usually surge up and take me over. And I w- I'll be like, I want to work on this. I want to work on that. And then I'll work on this. And, like, and there's just these little piles of everything that got started, but I was never able to really complete things because I just kept like ideas kept coming up, but I kept saying yes to them. So having a visual on my computer that tells me at this hour, you should be working on this And then this hour, you should be working on this. And in Google Calendar, it says time blocking. That allowed me to have a visual of exactly what I should be working on. And I know that it was a part of the bigger plan. So by the way, when I get to the next video I make about the larger overall vision, I'm going to show you how to break things down by quarter and get yourself a roadmap um, and give you points on how to do that. And that larger roadmap is where you figure out what you should be working on every week. And then you can figure out from that week goal, week target, what you should be working on every single day. That sort of structure and discipline allows my creativity to have longevity and I can bring even bigger, bolder, more badass, more complex even projects to life because I can actually roadmap better. Number two tip for you to feel like you're having daily success and achievement is a priority system. So you've got your to-do list, but what I need you to know is that not every item on your to-do list is urgent. You're going to try to argue with yourself that the ones you enjoy doing are the most urgent. You're meeting your friend Rebecca for your, your cappuccino downtown is so much fun. And that feels like urgent because it's fun, but that's not urgent. This is what actually helps you structure your day. I want you putting the urgent things at the top of your list. Get them done within the first hour or two of your working time block. I'm emphasizing working time block because the very first two hours of your day, the very first two hours of your day are for you. They're not about the world and everyone else. So the first two for you, that's my little saying, my little rhyme. First two for you. The first two are all about you. If you're in my Rise Revolution membership, I go into detail last month about this for a whole hour. I've got the whiteboard behind me and I'm breaking down time management like you've never seen before. I am a time ninja, okay? But I've learned how to become a time ninja and I'm giving you the goods in that video. So get inside the Rise membership if you're not in already. 
details are below this video. After the two hours are done, two for you, then you're into your working block. And this is where you might be about the external world. This is about other people, your external goals. In that chunk of time, the first two hours should be your most urgent tasks. This is because your energy is high and those are high priority, high urgent things, right? Like they really matter. It's do or die. They must get done and you're the one that can do it. You're the one that has to do it. So get those things done. Now, how do you know something's urgent with a quick glance at your schedule? I want you to think about using a rating system to do this. So I recommend people when they're first getting started with um, their scheduling of their day that you use a five-star rating system. And what you'll do is look at the items and goals that you have to do for the day. And you're going to give a five-star to anything that's wicked urgent and a one-star to things that are not so urgent. You have to be ruthless here because then what you can do is then rearrange your list to put all of the five and the fours at the top of the list. And then your threes, your twos, your ones at the bottom of the list. And then you take that chunk and you put them into your Google calendar just like that so that you know at seven o'clock because you've already gotten up at five and you've done your five hour and your six, six o'clock hour for you, two for you. And then you've eaten and now you're sitting down at your desk getting ready to slam the day. Seven o'clock, eight o'clock are the high priority things. The first two hours of your working set are all about urgent things, okay? And this way you are sure that before noon, you've gotten the most important shit done. I can sit back and really relax now. Yes, you can. It feels good. And then afternoon, you know, stuff can get a little crazy. Things can get a little hairy. People start making mistakes. You might need to put out some fires. The kids start acting crazy. Like you, you just have to kind of attend to nonsense things or sometimes people just need more from you later in the day and you're going to be more relaxed about it and be like, sure, how can I help? Because you know you've already gotten the most important things done, okay? So try that rating system out. Let me know what you think. I hope you're loving this. Let me get some coffee. It's early right now when I'm recording this. It's eight o'clock on a Saturday morning. But actually, I love talking about this stuff. I'm geeking out hard over this. I hope you are too. Are you guys loving this? Let me know in the comments. I hope this is serving you deeply. Okay, let's get back to it. Point number three about how to feel like you're winning on the micro level every single day, take breaks. Ooh, I've had to learn to do this because, um, and by learning it, I mean, you've got to practice, right? You've got to teach yourself the thing you don't naturally do. That's what learning is until it's natural. And when you start to take more breaks and see the benefit of that, you're going to be like, oh, damn, breaks are the Breaks are my bay. Breaks are boo-boo because research shows that taking breaks, one short break every hour at least is going to increase your productivity and your happiness and your life satisfaction. It is so important that you stop what you're doing every hour, get up from your desk, walk. I recommend you run. I recommend you jump in place. I recommend you dance. I recommend you get some water in you. Hydration is important and get outside in that sun. Or if you're like me and you live in upstate New York, where even in the summertime, there's sometimes not guaranteed sunshine. I have a sun lamp here. So I really feel like I'm getting that, that boost of serotonin and dopamine. That's so important. It's really important that you take breaks, okay? You will feel so much more productive for it, okay? Tip number four is connection. I work from home as an entrepreneur and I get lonely and and I don't even realize it's loneliness. I'll just be like suddenly like negative and in a bad mood or just like frumpy and my energy's dropped and I'm like, what's going on? Oh my God, I haven't seen a human in like two days. Anyone else other than my boyfriend, it's been maybe a hot minute, like three days. That can happen. And so I make a point to take my work to cafes at least once a week. And it's so refreshing. So here's what I want you to do. If you work from home as well, take your work out into the world grab your laptop and go. You will love it. And when you're out, I want you to challenge yourself here 
and make it a point to have at least two to three interactions with people while you're out. Having that social interaction releases neurotransmitters of dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin. Oxytocin is the bonding hormone as well as other endorphins. So being social is such a positive reward for your brain and it lights me right up. I had that experience yesterday. Having a random conversation with two people in the cafe made me feel so connected to people and I smiled and I made them laugh and they made me laugh and I learned about some strangers and then I went right back into my day and I noticed my whole mood was lifted. I had a pep in my step and it's because of all of those beautiful neurotransmitters getting released and I was able to dive right back into my work and be super efficient. So get outside of the house, plan for it and do not just sit there with your headphones on working take advantage of the social interaction and smile at people Hey, and give them a sincere compliment. Not only will that help you feel better, but you guys, a lot of people are struggling with anxiety and depression on a real note here. Like you could really make someone's day. You could really make someone's day. Do you know what I mean? By just giving a sincere compliment. Let's not forget the importance and the impact we can have as being human social creatures, right? We, we can do this. We can lift each other up and you're, it's, it's a win-win for everyone. Okay. So, all right, enough on that. The last valuable tip I have for you, tip number five, to feel really productive and momentous and achieving in your day-to-day grind is, this one's important, value the intangibles value the intangibles. It's been a learning curve for me to understand that my success isn't just based on how much I produce. Did I put a podcast out? Did I get this video uploaded? Have I created a course yet? Have I um, uploaded the replay yet? Did I make a reel? How many reel, how many likes? All of these business tangibles are important. But it's not the only thing that's important. And that's not the only measure of success. Like truly happy, successful people have understood that it's about work-life balance and intentionally scheduling time to not be productive is a success metric. If you are just thinking that success, I'm only successful when I'm producing something for my business or other people you are going to have a really hard time when you actually get successful. Because at that point, there's actually going to be a moment where you can coast a little bit. You have momentum behind you. And what we want you to have there is some other feeling inside of you that I am worthy and I have worth and value and I feel good about life that isn't attached to your business or your career. Because that's Your business and career is going to go up and down based on success. And we don't want your value and worth and your happiness to be attached to that. We want something else there in place that feels really solid. And this is about your relationship with self. This is about your relationship with self-awareness. This is about you knowing how to light yourself up and feel really good. So the more I embrace this non-doing mentality, the more I feel fired up about the doing. So the non-doing stuff, And just having a day of play like I did yesterday was so valuable. I mean, it's probably the reason I'm up early on a Saturday morning talking to you guys, making this video. It's because having a day where I intentionally said, I'm going to take a day off from work, just about fully off from work, and I'm going to work on me. I'm going to play. I'm going to explore. Made me so much more energized and I felt like uh, really in control of my life because I was like, I intentionally am here right now. I am intentionally at my cafe. I'm intentionally walking by the river. I'm intentionally, uh, I made a reel as well, which isn't work to me, that's play. All of these things poured back into me the way that work can't, right? Work is kind of for other people. This was for me to get that glow back on, to fill my cup back up so that I could then keep going. 
Don't underestimate that. That's an intangible, but it's worth its weight in diamonds and gold. It's so important that you do that. So I want you to intentionally plan and schedule those moments into your life. Prioritize it and watch yourself skyrocket into creativity and innovation and overall life satisfaction. So give these five tips a try. Your feelings of success, your actual success, your not only the perception of success, but your actual monetary success, your career success, your marital success is all going to skyrocket from this, these five tips. Give this video a like. You guys, if you find it helpful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I would love to have your subscribership. It would mean the world to me. And above all, would you do me a favor and comment below this video? video. What was the most valuable to you in this? And which tip really hit home like, ooh, that fell right into my soul. Thank you, Kim. I'd love to know. And if you have any recommendations um, on what really helped you feel very successful and become very productive in the day-to-day grind, put it below this video too. I know the community would love your expertise and to learn from other experts that are out there. And I'd love to learn from you as well. Thanks again, you guys, for being here. See you next time.